And I'd like to now welcome my colleague and Adweek's media editor, Lucinda Southern, to the virtual stage to help get this session underway. Lucinda, welcome. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. And thank you for that session before. I am so glad to have Chef Bot in my life now. So my name is Lucinda Southern. I am Adweek's media editor and a big welcome to you on our second day. Um, and a big thank you as well to Distillery, one of our partners. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Melinda Hahn Williams, Chief Data Scientist at Distillery to the stage. We're going to be discussing AI, machine learning, and how this tech is being used to really supercharge marketing. Um, Melinda's going to take us through a presentation first, and then I'll be coming back on and uh, talking through some different themes and different questions. But um, Melinda, welcome, and please take it away. Today, I'm going to talk about two major influencing factors in the development of today's digital marketing industry and that's privacy and big data. So privacy and big data are in some ways fundamentally opposing forces, especially when you think of a setting like digital advertising, where big data typically means um, like granular user level data, like the kind of data used to inform ad targeting, which is what we do at Distillery. So today I'll share the most recent generation, how the most recent generation of AI techniques can actually help to reconcile that conflict between privacy and big data. And specifically, I'll talk about how Distillery's ID-free custom AI targeting solution is able to target ads with precision and scale to users, internet users with no identifiers of any kind. So this story starts with big data. And I know big data is not really a hot term anymore, but that's kind of exactly the point of this story. So big data was a very hot term in the first half of the last decade, as you can see from a, a quick glance at this Google search trends. And this is really the period of time when, when ad tech, as we know it today, really took shape. So real-time bidding came out in around uh, 2008. The first Lumascape was made public in 2010. And today's digital advertising ecosystem with all the precision targeting and optimization and one-to-one -one addressability and hyper granular attribution and that completely jam-packed loom escape full of solutions, that whole ethos of digital advertising, it really came of age during this period where big data felt like the future of big data was the next big thing. And you know, it felt like big data was here to stay. And at the heart of all of that was this idea that more data is better. So the more touch points, the more granularity, the more fine grain observation you could get your hands on per user, the better. Because as we know, all of that stuff delivers high performance efficient campaigns. So then meanwhile, we started seeing um, the, the real effects of a, a totally different industry trend. And this is the trend towards increased user privacy. So in reaction to the fact that all of this fine grained user data was being collected in ways that um, a lot of users didn't understand and maybe didn't know how to opt out of. We started seeing moves by, by different players to limit tracking of a user's behavior, any, any tracking without that user's explicit consent. So if you look at this progression of events, you, and you kind of step back, what you see is this clear arrow towards a future where there is no default on individual user tracking that's available. And I think really the final confirmation of, of this sort of direction of motion of the industry is Google Chrome's plan to, uh, to retire third-party cookies entirely in 2022. So, so the loss of third-party cookies, um, it really, pulls the rug out from under that whole hyper granular one-to-one -one mentality at the heart of the current big data ecosystem. And, and this is why. So, so just focusing on the web for now, today over half of all internet users in the US um, have a, a, a browser ID, so a third-party cookie available that can be used for, for targeted advertising. And this transition away from having an always-on user ID um, to, to something that's only available like you know a little over half the time, it's already begun. 
Um, but it's been a change so far that the, that the industry could really safely ignore because honestly, there's still over half the population has this addressable ID. It's, you can still use that ID to run like a really precision targeted campaign at a decent scale. It's, it's fine for most advertisers. But when third party cookies are retired in 2022, we will see a dramatic change that advertisers can no longer ignore. So yes, there will be new identifiers available and when those are around, great. But for those IDs are only gonna be available on a small fraction of all of the available impressions. And so for up to 90% of all other inventory, there'll be no identifier, no user history, no user profile, and just really no way to do that one-to-one -one user targeting. So up to 90% of all web ads will be, will be bought and sold that way with no user IDs at all. So, so looking at this, you can see ad tech's relationship with big data uh, really is, is about to change. So here's the fundamental conflict, right? How does an industry that came of age in this era of bigger is better adapt to a new philosophy of less is more? So, so, so far I haven't talked much about how AI comes into all of this. And um, as you might imagine, it's so far in the story, AI is really aligned with the bigger is better side. The more data, the more optimization, the better. And, um, and by the way, that's what we do at Distillery, that user level high precision AI stuff that's been our bread and butter for, for over a decade. Um, so AI and advertising so far has really been fueled by this user level big data and, and fallen squarely on the side of bigger is better. As we enter into this less is more view on user level data, um, it might seem that there's maybe no longer a place for AI in digital advertising at all. Where does it fit? But AI has been changing. So this plot isn't a scale, but when you look at the search trends, you can see that, that AI has been on the rise in recent years and how people are talking about it, just kind of as big data has been falling out of fashion. Um, so today I wanna make the case that AI is actually becoming more adaptable in terms of what data it can learn from, which means that for the case of targeted advertising, AI is becoming less reliant on that traditional user level big data. So in response to this conflict between bigger is better and less is more, we can say that this new generation of AI takes the approach of, okay, fine, do more with less. So, so how do you do more with less? Specifically, when you're trying to target ads to a user that has no ID, how do you do precision targeting without having that, that data on the user that you're trying to target? So um, the answer is gonna be learn from the data that you do have. So in this future targeting landscape, you can see up to 90% of the time, we don't have any data on the user that we're trying to reach. So just broadly, our approach is gonna be to learn anything we can from the data that we do have, and then apply, that, apply what we learn from that data to target those users with no ID. Okay, so, so what am I talking about? What does that actually mean? Let's go to the, the actual AI solution. So it, it does involve a lot of data, but bear with me, it's not the data on, on any of the people that we're targeting or even on anyone that we can target. So our version of big data here is opt-in digital panel data. So these are people who have signed up to have their web behavior tracked as part of a research panel, um, totally out of reach of the advertising ecosystem. So we're not gonna try and target any of the people in that data set, but we are studying their behavior because it helps us decipher the behavior of other totally anonymous users with no IDs. So we take that data, we use it to build a map of behavior, which doesn't have any user information in it. And we call that the map of the internet. So this shows how every site on the internet is related in terms of what a visit to that site means. So on this, this big cloud of dots here, this is a map, this is the map of the internet. Um, every dot is a website and dots that are close, close to each other are websites that are visited with a similar intent. So just to show you how this works, I'm gonna zoom into this little portion of the internet in this little red box. And there we go. Uh, so, so every dot is a website. And you'll see that websites that are really close to each other 
think my animation is lagging a little bit. Yeah, websites that are really close to each other are about the same topic. So um, all the dots right next to each other right here, all of these are websites that are about high-end audio equipment. Um, and then websites kind of nearby are about related topics. So here are some websites about recording gear, some websites about musician gear, websites about teaching yourself music, more music stuff. And then you can look at the other side of audio and see camera blogs, photography, graphic design stuff. You can really just go on and on with this. The point is you can see this thing understands what these websites are about. It's getting this all from, from looking at the behavior of how people have visited these websites in the past. And when you zoom out back to that big cloud of dots, every single website on the internet is somewhere on this map. Okay, so now we understand the entire internet. Uh, where do we go from here? So, so this is where we introduce uh, first party data to build a custom AI model to make targeting predictions for a specific brand. Um, so we take that brand's data and we determine websites that have frequently or infrequently led to conversions in the, in the past for that brand. So here I'm showing an audio equipment brand and highlighting those websites in, in red and blue on this map for the internet. So this is like a, a seed signal for interest in this brand. So we take that and then we expand that indication of brand interest to every other site on the internet. Um, so this gives, this gives a behavioral intent score, which is custom optimized just for this brand, uh, which tells us for every single site on the internet, when someone is visiting the site, how likely are they to be interested in your brand? So you can see on this map highlighted in red are some of the neighborhoods of the internet where this AI process has found a lot of high scoring sites for this brand. Um, so it, you get a score for every single site on the internet and then we combine this with other impression opportunity characteristics, ultimately to find the set of impressions that are most likely to lead to a conversion for the brand. So to get back to something I think a little more concrete, this is what actually happens when you target an impression using Distillery's custom AI. Whether you're using IDs um, on the left or, or you not, not using IDs, which is what's shown on the right. So in either case, someone goes to the website, the web page renders, and this opportunity shown ad uh, is, is now available. And if you're using an ID to target, um, I haven't talked today about Distillery's ID-based custom audience solution, but behind the scenes, there's an AI process that's scored hundreds of millions of user data profiles against a custom AI model built just for this brand. And that's made a list of cookie IDs that qualify to see this ad. So it's like a, a traditional ID-based audience segment. Um, so you take this impression opportunity, um, you take just the ID from that opportunity, that's the only piece of information, and you take it and check to see if it's in that bucket of cookies that's previously been defined to, to qualify as part of this audience. Um, if it is, this person gets to see the ad. Uh, and then, uh, so without an ID, the same process without an ID, it's very similar, except for instead of taking the ID from them, that impression opportunity, you look at the other characteristics of that impression. And then you score that impression against this brand's ID-free custom AI model. And if the impression qualifies, then the user gets to see the ad. So it's a very similar process, um, just with different data. And the ID-free version works without an ID. So, so this works now, today, on, on any browser, any site, uh, any user, regardless of, of whether or not they have IDs. We've had clients testing distillery ID-free custom AI since last year, and we're seeing consistently strong performance. So here we're looking at results for, for three different brands in different industries. And we're using an approach to testing ID-free custom AI um, that we're doing with a lot of our clients and really recommending in general as a, as a first step for testing any new post-cookie solution. So what we're doing is we're testing old tactics and new tactics side by side. So here we have uh, ID-free custom AI in teal. And then we're also looking at our tried and true ID based custom AI in red and keyword contextual targeting in gray. So we're running these side by side and we're running the test entirely on users who also have cookies. And then and we use those cookies um, just for the measurement so that we can, we can then measure against those clients standard KPIs and they can compare results to sort of their standard solutions and understand what those measurements mean. So here we're measuring CPA, so lower is better. And if you look at the first one on the left, the pet e-commerce retailer, you see that ID-free custom AI 
in teal comes in just behind our standard ID based solution in red and, and a good bit ahead of contextual targeting. Um, and this is what you'd hope to see and what we really expected to see in general, to see the ID free version ranking just behind the ID based version of custom AI. Uh, and this is also what you see for the, the next example of a B2B logistics company in the middle. Um, and then if you look at the last brand on the right, the financial services provider, you see something that uh, we're seeing more often and, and didn't really expect from the beginning, which is that sometimes you even see the ID free custom AI coming in ahead of um, the ID based version of custom AI. So, so overall, the, the point of this is um, it works, we're using it today, um, and we're seeing really strong results from the solution where it's performing overall on par with a, a high performing ID based targeting solution. Um, so just to, to wrap it up, um, I think a, a key point is that the, the advertising ecosystem is fundamentally changing. And so for anyone involved with digital advertising, changing your relationship with big data, um, in particular that, that user based big data is, is really not optional. Um, so specifically, uh, to keep in mind that, that advertisers won't have access to that kind of user level information for up to 90% of the impressions that are bought and sold on the web. So the good news is that AI can do more with less and um, it can help you bring a lot of the performance that you're used to without the need for that individual individualized data on the actual users that you're reaching. Um, and you can start testing today. So Distillery's ID free custom AI works now on all browsers and all users with or without IDs. Melinda, thank you so much. What a great uh, presentation. I have a few questions and we have actually a few more minutes. So any uh, questions from the audience, just send them in and I will uh, feed them into the conversation. But um, my first one is you mentioned about the panel, the opt-in panel you're tracking. How big is that? So we're we're still gathering different data providers today. Um, the, the, so different providers have different sizes to their panels. Right now we're looking at a panel of several million users. And the thing that makes it really valuable is the, the depth of, of, how it, it, of how much you can see. So you know, today you can use cookies to do similar things um, and you can see sort of like a sampling of what people are doing. And when someone has signed up for a digital panel, you have kind of a different level of access to really the full sequence of everything they're doing, um, you know, ad supported or not every single URL. So that, that richness of the story really adds a lot to our understanding of how the behavior works. Yeah, that sounds really robust. Um, can you speak to, in a bit more detail about why you were seeing um, in the, the finance clients, why you were seeing the, uh, the, uh, the ID-free solution performing better for CPAs? Yeah, that is, that is such a good question. And it's a question that we honestly didn't expect to see. Like you would think just naively you have strictly less information you should not do as well. Um, so we've, we've really been working to understand exactly what that is. I'll tell you my, um, my hypothesis is that it's, it really is targeting someone without an ID, targeting using this ID free solution is in some ways fundamentally different than targeting an ID based user. Uh, when you think about traditional audience targeting based on IDs and really um, even a lot of how we think about speaking to, to customers in general when we're, when we're advertising, we're thinking about this complete person, this complete picture of a person. To really understand a person, you have to understand, you know, all the different facets of them and all of their experience and all the different things that they bring to the table. And that's when you really understand what it is they're looking for in life, what's going to resonate with them, and like whether you're interested in their product. Um, and that's that's kind of a philosophy that um, that honestly has been is pretty baked into how I think about targeting, um, since that's kind of the way we build our, our custom AI ID based solution. And I think something that, that might be happening with this ID free solution is um, actually when you know, people have different sides to them and people may actually don't want you to address all the different sides of them at once. Like maybe when I'm you know, reading articles about ad tech, I don't want you to start showing me ads about skiing. I'm not thinking about skiing right now and vice versa when I'm thinking about skiing, I don't wanna think about my job. And so it, I think some part of what might be happening um, is the idea that by catching someone in the moment where they're actually, um, it's not just about who they are as a person that's relevant, but where they are in that moment and their intent and motivation in that moment um, might be actually allowing that ad um, to, like, it might be a better way to, to reach someone and to reach someone with effective messaging. 
Right, so that's where you could say like the same advert on a Facebook newsfeed will work differently, potentially on a, a, a different environment or outside. Totally, exactly. You have to be in the right mindset, right? So I think this thing actually addresses what is your current mindset and the way that it's looking at the impression itself versus like all of the person's history. Okay, interesting. And um, if we're gonna go like zoom out a bit here, obviously predictive targeting with no IDs, you know, cookies going away, the pendulum is swinging, it's a big shift. Um, what are some of the other biggest challenges that advertisers are facing in adopting this approach from, from what you're talking to your clients? Yeah, I, and I think that, you know, stepping out, the, the challenge advertisers are really facing right now is just the scope of this transition. Like everything is changing so much. So we talk to a lot of people who know they want to test. Like that's one thing they figured out for sure. I need to test new solutions. Um, and from there, it just becomes a bit daunting. So I think um, some of the guidance I would give First is, is to remember that, that pie chart I showed of, of the inventory available. I think a lot of people have been hearing a lot about all of the solutions in that small part of the pie, the ID-based part of the pie. Uh, and it's, it's just really important, and, and they should test those. They should find their favorite solutions in that space. It's really important to also find your favorite solutions in the other part of the pie where there's no IDs. And if you, if you are able to test solutions, find ones you like in both part and sort of plan out a portfolio of, of solutions that works for you, then however the adoption plays out in the end, you'll be ready to just kind of turn the knob and, and adjust accordingly. So that's, that's like my number one approach for how clients should, should start to think about um, as a first step, how to, how to test. And then, you know, I have more, more advice if you get further along, but that's the first step. Yeah, it certainly seems like there is, once we still have third party cookies for targeting, that's a, people will want to remain with the, the solution that they currently know. So get and, absolutely, and, and they absolutely should. I mean, they work really well. There's no reason to, to throw those out the window now in preparation for this future. Um, but it is an important time to, to test, you know, test both the performance of new solutions and then test whether or not they can actually scale and like fill the, the amount of scale that you need in, in your campaigns. You mentioned um, in the presentation about measurement and then you're working with some brands um, with their measurement solutions. Like, mm -hmm. are you working on anything? Any, is there any way that AI and an AI-based solution can solve some of the measurement challenges with cookies going away? Yeah, I think probabilistic um, and, and sort of modeled out measurement is gonna start playing a bigger role. I think, I think when it comes down to it, I mean, so measurement's gonna completely change um, a lot of at least performance measurement relies on cookies right now. Uh, we might see browser APIs that would help with that, which would be which would be great. But I think even with those, uh, advertisers are going to have to start changing kind of how they think about measurement and start accepting different types of solutions. I definitely think AI-based or probabilistic solutions are are part of what um, people are going to need to start looking into and be willing to accept. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people who are looking for those those kind of solutions and. Mm -hmm people to help them on that journey. Um, well, again, Melinda, thank you so much. I think we do have time for to go through some of your takeaways, which I think are coming up on the screen. So if you don't mind bringing up some of the highlights there, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, thanks, absolutely. So, I mean, the first point I've, I've hammered home, but I really can't hammer home enough is that you have to, we have to change our relationship with big data. I think a lot of people are hoping that they can continue thinking about the data they use in the same way and just sort of put a different name on it. Um, but the ecosystem is is fundamentally changing. That user level big data is not gonna be available for most people. So we really have to change how we think about it. Um, and then of course, AI can help. Um, there's ways to do more with less where it is actually possible to do informed predictive targeting without you know, historical background information or all this detailed offline information on the person that you're targeting. Um, and again, Distillery's ID-free custom AI solution is available for today and um, ready to start testing now.